so many people willing to help me move forward and keep it going from community college to the district to the school to the teachers to ASU where I graduated with my bachelor's degree. Um, loved every minute of, of both, but it was a hard won little steps of success to try to get there. I also worked full time the entire time, so I worked overnight. I worked at the uh, Mesa Tribune as a district manager. So I'd go out to work at 2 a.m., work till about 9 or 10 a.m., go to school all day, go home, raise three kids, get dinner, do, and try to do homework in there. So it, it, to me, it seemed kind of normal. I was envious of those other students who really didn't have to do that type of a thing. But it was what I needed for me to grow my character for my inner strength, to understand who I was. Um, after I graduated from ASU with my bachelor's degree, I went back to that city center for the election, who was going to play for the first start, and asked them for a job. And they gave me a job. And I got to start uh, working with the same woman that I was, and still was at that point, and providing some classes and interaction uh, as I was uh, still growing professionally. And uh, at that point, I was providing classes at the University of Phoenix campus on Long School. And our little office was in Mesa. And one night, I saw on the table a flyer about a, because ASU was fabulous, but for those of you who are grads at a school like that, it's a full-time job just to get there. I mean, to sign up for your classes, and go across campus, and the park, and all this, it's a full-time job. And I knew I couldn't do my master's that way, nor did I really have aspirations for a master's at that moment. But I saw a flyer, and it was for a master's in counseling program there at that site in Long School. And I thought, wow, what is that? So I started researching it. And I, again, oh, I just do that. And so I applied to get into the program and did, and a few years later graduated with my master's in counseling at the University of Phoenix. In there, while I was at the University of Phoenix, I got a job at Mesa Community College, and I worked there for a little over a year. I uh, first of all worked in the Ed Tech Center with Dr. Jean Parrish. I don't know if he's still in the district or not. He's not. And then I worked with Dr. Penny Schwan uh, at the um, uh, Institute. And I don't believe she's with the district no. anymore. But let me tell you, was that an experience and a half? Uh, for those of you who know Dr. Parrish and Dr. Sharon, that was an experience and a half. <laughs> yeah, I learned so much from that time with them. But just learn buckets of information, what to do, what not to do, I mean, a number of things. And loved working at the community college district. And then from there, I was given the offer to find more course development in Maricopa County, and I was there for a little over 10 years. Spent six years of child health running their program. And, um, and then uh, I started running some group homes for them, uh, for young girls who are in the foster care system. They were there because they were either pregnant or they had babies. And uh, the cycle of abuse and neglect was already evident. And so I was working those uh, homes and started bringing young girls with a caseworker down to I wanted them to know that there were resources, that they had options, that they had to remember back in my thought, of, I didn't know why I didn't write that paper correctly. Um, it's kind of a, a mantra that I like to say. You don't know when you know, then you know. And then you can also know you just don't know. And so these little girls, there's so much they don't have in front of them because they don't have a vision. They don't have a, a picture of, oh my gosh, I could be that. One little girl in particular, her mother was an active prostitute on the internet. That was an option for her. That was the potential. She's considering her options here, and that was on the table. What's the guy? What's her mom? Could work for me. Devastating to us. Horrifying to us. But to her, that's the vision, that's the picture, that's the opportunity she had in front of her. My job was to change that picture, was to give her, well, there's other things as well. And so I started taking them to Fresh Start and trying to negotiate with Fresh Start, could we offer, could we do a close program for young girls in this kind of circumstance? And at the time, they said no. 
Um, but during that time that I was touring uh, my clients, the job opened up. And again, oh my gosh, if I could just do that, if I want to maybe gauge how to do that, if I want to make an impact in this community, the only way to do it is with the money. If you impact her, you're impacting all of us. You're impacting the community, society, employers, the tax base. You are in making an impact. And you can do something about child abuse and you don't that way as well. But we pay attention to the young ones. And so uh, it wasn't an easy process, but they didn't have it. They offered me a job. I've been there a little over three years. And we're making such great strides in sophistication of program delivery, sophistication of how we're providing the services and the breadth of services. Uh, not just doing a shopping approach, but creating a, a uh, for her to follow, eliminating, uh, creating that vision, creating her picture, and giving her that picture of here's what it could be, here's where you can go, here's the opportunity. Trying to provide to her what was given to me at the reentry office at the Center for New Directions. Of women, yeah, you can. And when they said that to me, and I remember going up to them. Yeah. And she said, if not you, I don't know who. Of course you can. And you know what, Susan? You should. And that's what sealed it for me. I should. I had an obligation to my children to show them that you don't have to just take what life gives you and lay down and stay there. You can get up and create form and get a backbone and get a plan to move forward. Now, like our clients at, at Fresh Start, they do the work. They're doing every bit of the work. We are not doing any of the work. But we are providing tools, ideas, support, structure. We're illuminating a path so they avoid the cliff and they avoid the falling rocks and maybe they can avoid some of those mistakes that I made. We can share with them when we go to school. Pay attention to that punctuation. Look at that before they make the same mistake I like made, or any other mistakes that we're aware of that we can kind of guide them and help them to see them flourish and grow and go where they want to go. It's trite, and I don't mean this to be trite, but platitudes are platitudes because they're real, correct? But if I can do it, I know anyone can do it because I am not a grandparent. Um, I didn't have a clue. It took a village to move me forward and help me along the way. What I did have was willingness to take a step. And as a counselor with my clients, my philosophy has always been, when she takes a step, I'll step right in. Step by step, we'll go together, shoulder to shoulder. When she stops, I stop. Great. When she stops, I mean she's, she's full. She maybe can't absorb anymore. Maybe she's not ready for that next step. That's OK. Seeds are planted. It's OK. Let her stop. When you see students in the district office or in the classroom, um, they understand that maybe it is their first opportunity to have a moment of success. And maybe inside their even though I don't know if any of you are in uh, financial aid, if they come back in for the fifth time and ask the question over and over again, it's OK, because that was me. Let me tell you, the next year, uh, I walked into uh, community college, signed up for classes, and they said, well, you know, you have to pay. No, 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 I have financial aid. <laughs> 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 well, no, I did last year. Why I mean, literally, that's okay. <laughs> so I don't know who I was. Ashamed to say it. We fall down in life uh, for many reasons. We all have our challenges. We all have issues in our past, in our history. Some of our fathers leave us. Maybe some parents have passed away. Maybe we were abused as homes. I mean, there's a myriad of stories, but we also all have wonderful things in our lives opportunities and skills and abilities. And it's all about taking that and shaping it. I'm going to go back to a brief story because also, as I was raising my children and before I started college and started on my path, and even during some of that time, I was having a very relationship. 
it was uh, hostile and abusive and negative. And it wasn't with a man, and it wasn't with him, it was with me. And one of the things I like to uh, talk with our clients about, and I ask them, how many of you in a relationship, and, you know, one or two things go up, and then I challenge them. Who were you in the shower with this morning? Who were you in the car with today? If you go somewhere by yourself to the grocery store, who are you talking to? Who are you having an ongoing dialogue with? That's who. You're, you're in a relationship of the most significant kind. And as a counselor, you know, the, the cycle that will result in you must love yourself before I never can love you. Well, that's true. I, I, I believe that. But I never knew well, how do you do that. How in the world can you do that? And so through my counseling practice and exposure to other people, I've learned a technique where it was this kind of child piece, but protecting myself as a little one so I can love her when I couldn't love her. I could love her. So if I can visualize her, I know that I'm her and she can go very much. But no one knew that. But when I started having that, I started going, wait, when I tried to go that way, and over time, I learned how to be more nurturing and loving to her, and pretty soon she became me. And I don't do that anymore. I don't beat myself up anymore. Um, I'm not always the best to myself either, because I've arrived anywhere. But I have learned that I'm okay, and I've got a long ways to go, and a lot of mountains to climb yet, but I'm okay where I am. And I have one to love myself. Because quite frankly, if I don't love myself, no one else is going to And that's one of the lessons and one of the philosophies that we're imparting to our clients at Fresh Start. And what a privilege to have a role of any kind in the world of human lives. Uh, to be able to impart any kind of knowledge that I have. Now, as the CEO, I don't get to see them very often, one-on-one -on -one and I teach at capital classes, but uh, I, I don't get to do that very often, which is a good thing because as a counselor, I'm dead, as a program designer, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. But it's a privilege to design programs that I believe are going to enhance her world significantly because I am her. And I think about what would I want if I walked into this place. Uh, for those of you who have not been to Fresh Start, and I would love to invite you down, meetings, a tour, whatever you like. But it's a beautiful facility, and it's a little intimidating. And then we have a catalog. I brought some for you because you're interested. But what does this look like? Looks like your course catalog, doesn't it? <laughs> and, you know, quite frankly, when I opened the community college group, I'm like, really? Where I went? Oh, I saw I mean, <laughs> so, so we have a, a catalog of workshops that really is impressive. And yet, when I look at it, I go, where would I start? How would I even begin? And I might go and walk out because it would be too daunting for me. So we have tried to structure some really easy ways for her to engage with us uh, while using this, but not being overwhelmed, not being overpowered. So it's really exciting to be her, to know her inside out, and to be able to serve her from that vantage point. The other philosophy that we use at Fresh Start is, and I use this with staff a lot, and I love food, it's all about food, okay? mm -hmm. um, is that we're laying out a banquet, a banquet of services. So if we have the banquet, and we have the roast, and the turkey, and the stew, and I hate that plate, by the way. <laughs> my, my plate is flipping. So I'm like, wow, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but uh, if we have the banquet with all the fixings and a client walks up like I would have to take an olive and skid her away because she's not worthy, she doesn't know what she needs, she doesn't know she needs to use punctuation, she doesn't know yet enough about what she does need to be able to self-select. 
and so we encourage her to participate in the banquet and take it, take it all, keep your plate, and come back for seconds. Because when you're feeding yourself and you're investing in yourself, you are investing in your children, you're investing in your community and in your society. Um, and we're also doing a lot of services. As I said, I also spent time in child health, uh, focusing on domestic or uh, child abuse and neglect. And uh, because of that, we're doing a lot of services in our center now about the child and the mother as a parent and those nurturing pieces and parenting skills and trying to uh, break any cycle of neglect that might be going on because if she's in stress and anxiety, so is that little guy. And so we're paying attention to that end of the spectrum as well, really impacting her entire household. Uh, it's exciting work that we're doing. But all I can say to you, Maricopa, Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here, for the work that you do, for the work that you do that supports the community colleges and allows students to go to school and to have that experience, for the work that you do face-to-face -face with those students and giving them encouragement to continue on, um, and then uh, for your patience for those of us that come back in five times to the program, take a word, but we don't know what we signed up for and we're lost. And we look like we're just completely um, ill at ease. We are. But we will make it with your side guidance and help and support and your kindness and encouragement for us to continue on. So thank you so much for today as well and allowing me some time with you to share uh, a little bit about me and a little bit about the show. Our funding right now is primarily private from two main events we do every year at Gala and the Golf Tournament. We have a lot of sponsorships. We have a growing pot of grant funding, uh, but primarily we were able to private funding at this point, which actually, let me just add on to that, is not all bad. It's not all good either. We are uh, preparing ourselves to go after some federal money. But it, what's nice about that is I have worked at other nonprofits, as I mentioned, that are so constricted by their funding guidelines, we do not have those. So where it's allowed us to create a niche for our client in that stability piece, in that really getting her stabilized and emotionally ready to go forward, and then when she's ready to go forward, to help her go forward, rather than, uh, like at Maricopa County, uh, workforce development is get a job, any job, I'm here job, get a job. Get a job. And instead of having that person really emotionally ready for that, uh, we get to do that. And that's really the wonderful work that I think Fresh Start is able to do. And second part is, how do you, how do you get your clients? How do, how do folks know that you exist? I would say probably a good 75% is uh, worth now referral. Uh, the other is we do have, uh, a, we enjoy a good reputation as far as some services. Uh, we do have a reputation, I'm candid with you, that we had a reputation in the community of fluff and stuff among uh, other service providers because we started uh, with hair, makeup, application, and wardrobe. That was our kind of our uh, origin. Uh, and because of that, it's fluff and stuff. Well, it, it really is not now. But I think most women hear about us through the community. Every trimester, we have a catalog that comes out on a trimester basis, and we have a community breakfast, partnership breakfast, where 60 or so uh, partner uh, programs come in, tell their what their services are, and pick up boxes of these uh, catalogs that they take back and provide to their services uh, to their clients. So there's a lot of referral, a lot of cross referral going on. We have, uh, as I said, we serve a little over 5,000 women every year, and that's an individual count. About 27,000 of them come to our center every year. So we're busy. Okay, so you did the breakfast, when is that happening? That is right before every catalog comes out. We can send you information about that and um, what to include here. What is your next uh, event? Our gala is on February 21st at the Bill.
And uh, we have uh, Joe Torrey as our honorary speaker. Um, do you know who he is? I didn't. <laughs> but everyone else does. He's a big sports fan. Uh, the Giants coach, I think. But anyway, those two are kind of connected to sports. He runs a domestic violence program back east because he was a victim of domestic violence as a child in his household. And so he's coming to speak about that. We're very excited. Our gala, one thing Fresh Yard knows how to do is a gala. And it is um, black tie event. They're band. Wonderful. We will net a million dollars at our gala this year. And that's almost anywhere that we're going there. So uh, we also have, I just had our golf tournament in November, and uh, our men's board puts that on every year. And that's also very exciting. So those are our two I mean, this part's open to any woman of any social or economic background or, or the predominant women who may come from a domestic, you know, a violent background or maybe, you know, coming straight out of a prison background or, you know, looking for a, a, a re-entry into the marketplace background or any women that are looking for a fresh start. Are they open to all women? It's open to all women. Um, we actually, because of our funding model, we uh, take some demographic information from our clients, but there's no eligibility. Uh, we don't even take citizenship. Uh, we don't. We just don't care. We don't care about her income level, anything. Uh, so it's for any woman, anywhere. I will say that most of our clients in the center probably 40 some percent experience domestic violence. We have a pretty good critical mass of chronic homelessness. We have a population of SMI individuals. Um, and then we have women who are looking for their next steps. What am I going to do in my retirement? Or, so it's pretty much the broad spectrum of women, but it is open to them. A lot of our workshops, we do ask for a $5 copay from our client because we do want to have some skin in the game. However, that is waivable if she cannot afford that payment and for a lot of times we that fee. That's really just kind of a psychological investment in her own growth. We have uh, workshops, I'll start with career services, we do have a number of workshops in career services where we do resume writing, interview techniques, job search, uh, we have a workshop on how to attend a job fair optimally that is provided by partners at Goodwill Career Centers, uh, and we have a, a what I call jump start, a week long program that uh, when women can't afford that week, it is completely free of charge, no copay, but the week is expensive for her. Uh, so we use the cohort effect. Uh, there's a lot of literature and research out there about the cohort effect, putting like people together with like goals and like groups that they connect and gain from each other. So this week long program is 40 hours to start with self esteem, confidence building, communication, assertiveness, um, handshake, eye contact. And then we move her through some job readiness pieces, uh, and we have her come in with a resume already pre-written and learn how to adapt a resume to a job description. Because job descriptions can be very tricky. And so we, uh, she uh, does some interview critiquing, interview techniques, and then she learns her, creates her own elevator speech, and at the last day they have a little networking event, and cookies and lemonade, and they network with staff and others that come in, and use her handshake and they found eye contact and body spacing. So it's powerful. They graduate. Uh, along with that, if a woman cannot take the week, uh, we have Kickstart, which is the same workshops, but all of wherever they land in the catalog, and she can go there. She misses out on the cohort effect, but many women can afford that week. So career services is, is there. Oh, we also have job fairs on site on a regular basis and hiring events. Uh, we also have personal development. So we talk about in personal development uh, boundaries, effective communication, goal setting, uh, assertiveness again. Uh, we have uh, time management. Uh, um, uh, what I want to say, uh, study skills for a woman who's going back to school. Many of our clients are looking to go back to school. Um, and then in there, we also do stress reducers. So we have Zumba class, drum beating classes. Uh, we have uh, professionals come in, they do haircuts, 
make up application. And again, that's our proofer side. We didn't let it go completely, but you know, we want women to feel the best they can, not that we can feel like we're like that. But uh, make up application, we get huge donations from philosophy. So our clients all walk out with food bags of philosophy. Um, and uh, we also wardrobe our clients. We have a secondhand store called Treasures, Fresh Drop Treasures, on Thomas and 40th Street. Fun, fun, fun. Go check it out. It's a beautiful store. Um, everything in the store is donated to us, and we sell it to the community, and those funds support our efforts as we have and models being built. Uh, but there are beautiful, some beautiful things in there. Gala that's coming up. Every year I buy my gown at Treasures. So I buy a discount. Treasures. Uh, so <laughs> our, our clients go to they take a professional wardrobing class. We give them a ticket, and they go to the treasures, and they can select their own outfit, shoes, handbags, the whole thing uh, from the store. Um, and we kind of lead them. We help them. Our staff will help them and guide them. And when they come to the register with their ticket, if they have a bikini in their line, not so much. <laughs> so we want to make sure they get a good look. And they can have a free outfit every 90 days. Um, and then for a lot of our graduations and celebrations that we do with our clients, we'll give them a gift certificate to Treasures for $20 or $25 or something. So she can go kind of get some other things that she needs. And there really are some lovely, lovely things. Our clients need to go reward her for her new work or she's going to do uh, a court date. We also offer legal services and uh, we have two certified legal document preparers on staff who will work with our clients to go through the legal uh, court system. How to address the judge, how to address their paperwork if they're going for an order of protection or custody or divorce or whatever family law issue they have. We also have a number of lawyers who volunteer their time at the center to see our clients one on one. And that is really a heavily Services. And then I would say the core of what we do is uh, we ask our clients early on to go to your Fresh Start. That's the name of our orientation. And she can take it. It's every day at noon. And what it is intended to do is to get her excited. I want her to not, when they come in our door, she can see this uh, a victim posture on her. And, um, and really, what I believe is true is whether she knows it yet or not, she just did the most powerful thing she could do. And she said, you know what, I'm going to make change, and you're going to help me. And you're going to give me some tools, I'll do the work, but come on, come on, let's get it going. And so she was just powerful in her own stance on doing that. And uh, in your fresh start, I want her to know, wow, <laughs> okay, I'm ready to go. I want that, that, that. I'm going to take, I'm not going to. Y'all, I'm going to take the recipe and really get excited and move forward. And from there, we have her meet with a resource specialist who will address her immediate needs, whether it's food or transportation or housing. Or if she's in crisis, we'll get her to the right place and we'll uh, immediately ameliorate her crisis. And then we have a team of social workers, MSWs, who work for us and they work with our clients one on one and barrier identification, barrier resolution, goal setting next steps. Uh, they will work with the client as long as necessary. Some of them work with me for several years, some of them it might be whatever the client's needs are. And they do everything up to and above the hands of counseling. Um, we're not a counseling agency, so we do watch that carefully, but we do have some partnerships of counselors that come in in groups. Uh, we have uh, groups on the second half. So I'm over 50 or I'm over 45, what's next for me, what do I want to do next, how do I transition into retirement, we have financial uh, workshops, we own a class done by the YWCA on how to budget, how to manage your uh, income, how to do your banking, investments, uh, getting ready for your retirement, uh, and home ownership by uh, looking at credit correction. And so we have a number of things. We also have a leadership series that goes on once a month on a Friday morning. We have a different speaker every month come in to talk about the topic. Pretty high powered stuff. We usually have about 100 women in there for that and have breakfast for them. Um, so we have an arts and activities. 
we have a speaker series, a speak for AGR, and I created that because as many uh, nonprofits, and we have galas and events, they need that story to be told to their donors, that heart hugging story. So the donors will go, oh my, yes, I'll go to you. And, and that's just an essential piece of uh, the world. However, as a counselor, I'm like, I don't, I don't think so. I don't like that at all. I, you know, our, our clients are not as good to be looked at at all. Really. Uh, and to make them go on stage. Now, they volunteer to do so, but I know the uh, authority to function. I'm the counselor, I'm the person, I'm saying, hey, we help you, so when you come and speak, and she might very well feel obligated to do so. And I know at times, they're put in a very dangerous position by sharing too much information or being exposed uh, in some way. And so what we've done is we've created a speaker series, and it's very much about public speaking, it's about presentation skills, uh, because we all need that in our jobs, and then it's how she wants to tell her story in a very safe, confined manner. And once she feels good about that, if she wants to volunteer to share her story at an event, now she's ready, and I feel confident. So our speaker series has been phenomenal. We just had 12 women um, graduate. We also have a wonderful program with uh, Freeport Medline and Betty Bird uh, School of Business called Dream Builder. And it was built for the South American countries. It's a entrepreneurial training program in Spanish. Uh, they use Telenoleva as kind of the apparatus that they use. It's really quite fun. And they wanted to pilot it in the United States, so they piloted it with us. We had 20 clients go through it. It was all in Spanish. They have a business plan, a funding model. They walked out with, I mean, we talk about very proud women. Um, they had a big graduation at Freeport. Husbands, families, everybody came. Everyone dressed to the nose. It was so wonderful. And these women are now off and ready to start their new business. Um, so they are translating that into English, and we'll pilot that as they roll that out across the country. So there's a number of different kinds of things that we offer, not the least of which is our scholarship program. So for a client who has gone through a series of basic, she's ready. We know she's ready. She's gone through maybe Jumpstart or Kickstart, or, um, but we also have a big uh, domestic violence program that we offer and uh, we worked out of ten in the groups and we're kind of the now what I'm safe, I'm secure, I'm kind of out of the crisis and now what we're working on that. We offer a program for those victims of domestic violence. But our scholarship program last year we expended one hundred and twenty six thousand dollars in scholarships for women to go back to school, certificate, uh, degree programs, um, whatever their needs are. We have a board committee that approves those and such a privilege to send them to school and to have them complete. We have a client who's speaking at Gala this year. She went to and got completed her master's degree in her scholarship program over the last two years. She is now employed in this venue and she's going to speak on our behalf. So we see a lot of great success that way. Um, and we also were just awarded five full ride scholarships from Apollo. And so from the University of Phoenix. This year, we're going to be able to send five women to who are ready uh, for either your bachelor's or master's degree. And I am like a little bit when I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. But um, so it's exciting. So, Susan, since Lisa from Newton College has such a great impact on you, do you have to some of those women to our colleges? We do. Okay. Uh, and primarily, most of our scholarships are for the community colleges. Thank you. Uh, the, the price point. Uh, the ease of access, the colleges are all across the valley, so that is our primary uh, point of reference. Thank you. First of all, just um, what a wonderful program. I'm so moved to hear about it and glad to know about it. Um, I wonder, do you serve refugee populations? You know, we are working with a group right now to try to create something for that population. We have a certain number that kind of come into our center. But we don't have a, a corral uh, service delivery for them yet. Uh, so that is a big need out there. There's a few populations that I'm very interested in, along with refugees, that we're looking to serve over this next year. 
Uh, one is uh, female veterans, homeless veterans, a huge issue in our community, in our society, huge issue. And then uh, women uh, in the jail system. AWE, you're probably familiar with AWE, the Arizona Women in Education and Employment. They do a lot of work in the prisons, and so uh, I, and I think they do a good job of that. So we're looking with Maricopa County to go in and provide some services for a women's in jail system who are there because of domestic violence. Uh, because many of them are in jail because they've done something for their accusers, or the drugs, or, or you know, did the getaway car, or whatever. I, but you know, and so they don't have the wherewithal to provide those services, and we do, and we want to transition. So we'll be in jail for less than a year, of course, and we want a to start there and transition them into our center. Big population of us is domestic violence, and uh, again, where the now what point in time? And we're, we don't have the housing, we don't have the crisis intervention other than the good referral piece, but it's okay, I'm in sojourners, I'm safe, or I'm about to leave, I, you know, now what do I do? So we do some safety planning and uh, goal setting with them, and we have some very corral focused pieces for that population as well. But the refugee population, we got on our radar. The other piece that we did, I told you at Child Health, I ran group on Triggers Young Girls, and I will tell you when I took this over, and I know I'm talking to you, that's you just love it. I, okay, one more minute. Uh, <laughs> Child Health asked me to uh, do an evaluation of the group, and I found the house, so I can do that. I walked in, and the little girls were broken, broken, broken. And I've never seen a life in so many girls now, and I was just devastated. And they scared me to death, and I thought, how am I going to do this? Well, not to get into the details, but what happened was I fell madly in love with these little girls. Madly in love with them. They never loved me back, don't get me wrong. But I just absolutely, they're so important to us. And to make a difference there if we can, because they have no option. So we have started a new program called Girls Rising. It was based on the movie and documentary that we talked about Girls Rising. I don't know if you've seen it or not. Have you seen it? Because what I, I have a copy of it. It is about the impact it makes to educate a girl. And they follow nine girls from across the world. It is so phenomenal. I'll share that. But uh, so we thought uh, we have so many options in the United States. And yet we still have an issue. And so we thought our role is to do something about girls' education. So we started a program uh, along with the Intel called Girls Writing. And uh, it's for girls 13 to 18 years of age. It's about empowering those young girls to make better decisions, to set some goals, uh, to overcome barriers. And it's for the most part girls who are in the foster care system or dealing with some adverse um, situations. A lot of them are in a domestic violence situation with their parents. Many of them right now are, are the daughters of our clients, uh, and they're coming from all around our community. And that is becoming a big big needs that we're seeing. So we're excited to be able to serve young girls. And I keep hoping that I'll see one of the group of girls come to the door, but they haven't yet. We, we also have a responsibility to make an impact there. And then the other impact that we are making is we have a child watch center on site. We watch the little ones with the mothers while we're in classes. And as I said, we're doing more and more to make that a holistic program for mom and child. Um, but we are pursuing our license we adhere to all the licensure for the care center, but women cannot leave the site without the child. So we're not licensed for that. We are pursuing our license. So when a woman needs to go to an interview or a court case, she can leave her child with us. And that is in response to the recent issue here in Maricopa County. Uh, that was just devastating because that impacted me. I thought, what would I have done? And uh, I don't know. I hope I would have done something. To be honest with you, I can't speak to what she did or didn't do, but I what I what that landed me at is what would I have done as the employer? And I'm ashamed to say that I probably would have said the next because I would have seen shades of things to come. And yet I might have ended up as a great employee if I had uh, allowed some latitude and some flexibility there. So I thought, well, Fresh Start's role should be that our mother should be able to leave their child there for a few hours while they're off doing something like that and they would be more quickly and they can safely take care of their children and have them there. And our goal this year for Child Watch is that the mothers right now bring their children, put them in Child Watch while they're in the workshop. 
I want them to all self say, I'm going to bring Johnny to child watch for this activity. And while he's there, I'm going to go to workshop. So it's as valuable for the child as it is for the mother. And uh, we're very, very excited about that. We love having these little friends there. Is that awesome? Thank you. 